So continuing with looking through the next part of this piece, uh, here we have it. So we have left hand in a spread out octave with an open fifth position like this. And then of course there is the right hand with... Now here again, I disagree with the fingering in this edition, I prefer to use this finger right here, the reason being that it allows me to much easier navigate the positions. Right, something like this. So again, some people might prefer to do this. But I, I think that having these five fingers spread out just like this is not a bad idea. Um, what else is possible? Um, maybe that. That's another possibility. Right, so you would shape just four notes, well, five, but you were not going to play that A sharp, right? So that makes it a little easier than, than to do this. But everything has its own disadvantage and advantage, or vice versa. So the way you approach it doesn't ultimately matter as long as you commit to position shifts uh, that you've decided on. So, in fact, let's go ahead and do this slightly simpler, uh, but requiring that little shift of the one in the following measure. I'll get to it in a second. So we're going to put down four here. Four, and that obviously implies one right here. Okay, so let's go with this and to map out my position shifts, we're, we're going to have something happen here. And we're going to have something happen, well, obviously, must prepare here at the beginning of the measure and then right here. Maybe a little bigger on that box. Okay. So here we go. Um, actually, no, that I was right the first time. Whoops. And I'll explain in a second what I mean. Okay, so let's just look through what I have mapped out. Prepare the positions first. Now on, on that note, and I'll go ahead and highlight it, cyan, um, we're gonna have to do a very important thing in the left hand. That's kind of crossing over of the longer fingers over the thumb. I'd like to keep the thumb bent under because what happens is we have to come back to this thumb in um, the end of the measure. So let's go ahead and add this position right here. And that means that if you allow the thumb to come out, well, now you have to find that E note again. Okay, and that can create all kinds of issues. Whereas if you keep, keep it bent under, right, so if you, I don't know which, which camera to show it to, but yeah, if you keep it like this, then it's so much easier to just find the E and s spread the left hand back out for that, uh, final beat. Uh, in the right hand, we're going to have that kind of same idea that the long fingers cross over the thumb on that little box right after B. And at that moment, you notice that the thumb is still stuck on B. And it probably won't move out until you actually play the C sharp with that C sharp, you will make that move. Now it is absolutely possible to do it this way. But then what you're really practicing is playing it in this kind of pseudo staccato style, which of course takes more effort. And uh, here you just have a simple cascade and zigzag type of a passage. 
right up down up down and so i think it's just easier to split up that position shift into those two parts so first we cross over like this and then i'm going to add one more little box right here so oops as soon as we play the c sharp let's go ahead and add a like green highlight uh, the thumb comes right out whoops uh, so I'm holding that uh, B with finger one. I've got C sharp ready with five, uh, G sharp ready with two, you know, four also on B. So I've got that kind of transition. And then I'm about to play the green highlight. Ah, really hard. Right, so that's the move. And again, I love my backwards uh, practice idea for just that sort of pro a problem. So I'm, I start at that green highlight all down position. Right, the last four measures of the last four notes of this measure are very easy to do. And so now all I work on is this. I'm step one note back, and so here is my thumb on B. I'm about to play the green highlight C sharp. Boom. That's a that's a big physical move, so. Ah, very tricky. So I'm on that B, right? As long as I can really physically focus on that flicking out of the thumb, slight readjustment of my, I mean, you can see there's a lot going on. There's the arm motion, there's a sort of wrist or hand deviation uh, at the wrist. And so all kinds of things are going on like that which you need to master if you want this passage to go smoothly so uh, then you back up one more note so now we are at I'm just going to keep moving a little marker of sorts uh, like start on that E ready to play the B and then C sharp now you see that Right, and each time you reattempt to do this, you're trying to make it smoother and easier. And there it is. So then, of course, I'm going to keep moving that heat, um, starting point. Whoops. Well, I mean, you you see what I'm trying to do. Now I start from that C sharp. Uh, so we have C sharp with finger two there. And then, you know, if ever you're practicing like this and you're not sure about what finger to use, just figure it out and put it in. So here's that red two. Right now I have four notes that I've joined together and always stopping to make sure that position adjustment is taking place. Uh, so where are we? Okay, then of course you go back to F sharp. Of course I have to delete my two, unfortunately. I have to figure out a better way to show my starting point for these segments, I guess. Okay, so five notes, all right. Eventually, right. So two key points: bringing the long fingers over and then flicking the thumb out. Takes a little bit of time and effort, but once you solve it, it's sort of done. Now you should rely on it to help you to play it smoother. Right. So cyan, first stopping point. Did I bring the left hand fingers over? Then I continue. say let's call it a indigo highlight first right hand position change so here it is right that's all that's happening i'm bringing the left uh, the long fingers over in my right hand and then green highlight but you notice what happened not only was there that shift in the right hand quickly let's give it another color let's call it orange i have to do something in my left hand as i play the g sharp in the right hand right so these are the kinds of reasons why something that 
especially hands alone, makes a lot of sense and you can practice and do it. You put hands together and these complexities line up one on top of the other and suddenly a simple passage becomes not so simple anymore, which is why I really do recommend often practicing hands together as soon as you can. Once you've figured out what's going on with each hand separately, coordinating all these position changes and finger simultaneities, um, it, it's a bit of a challenge. So again, let's just imagine that we got to the end. We're already past the orange or brown or whatever you want to call it highlight. We're in this position. Right? Let's say that's what we're doing. Easy. Good. But getting into it, we're holding the G sharp in the left hand. So this is right before the brown orange highlight. I'm holding the C sharp, that green highlight, but already have moved into this last position in the right hand. It's just the focus is on the left hand. I'm about to go into the G sharp in the right hand, finger two. I'm about to play the E with finger one in the left hand, and that's all I'm working on that. So my left hand snaps into place. Right, so that move is very important and I have to master it. Okay, then I will um, step one note back, so to speak, still holding G sharp in my left hand, finger one bent underneath, ready to strike the E at that brown highlight. But now I'm holding the B, that indigo highlight. And I've got all the fi other fingers ready, and so I'm now flicking out. Ooh, that was not right, like rhythmically. I kind of did the move, but I needed to land together E and G sharp, like that, and I didn't do that. So one more time, holding the B, have the long fingers ready, got the thumb bent underneath in the left hand, and now striking the C sharp, and then striking the two notes together. Again, screwed it up. One more time. Holding the B, the indigo, holding the G sharp, about to strike the C sharp, the green. And then just... Okay, finally. I finally landed those E and G sharps together, and I think I got my position shift just right. One more time. Holding those two. Green highlight, uh, green, yes, green highlight C sharp. Got it. So just two notes basically, and yet so difficult because of that hand position shift coordination. Now, stepping back even further, I'm holding the E. What should I do? Uh, let me, I'm actually going to try to experiment with something. Maybe not, maybe just not, not right now for the next video, uh, but, um, Delete that yellow there, and I'm going to show that I'm starting my segment from where that yellow line is showing. All right, here we go. Holding down the E with finger four, holding down the B with finger two in the left hand, starting to get ready. Ooh. See, landed in the wrong position because I want to do this in the right hand. One more time. start in the right position, kind of rush through it. So one more time. That's the starting point. Left hand thumb is tucked under. Okay, that was a little better. I think I managed it. Maybe slowing it down a little bit just to be more precise. But at some point the stepping backwards idea is going to become too overwhelming. I mean, I know we're not playing the full measure even, but we're trying to get so many things right to kind of lay in the foundation for all the rest of the work that it's just too much for the brain in one practice, which is why at some point uh, my preference is to stop going so far. So 
This is good enough, but how about this time we're going to stop right here. Right, so right on that B note and not go on. So what that means, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to press the B and make sure my long fingers go over, but I'm not going to continue past that point. All right, so of course I'm holding the B in the left hand. I'm holding that, okay, one more time with the yellow. So I'm holding, starting from the E um, and the B on that third beat. Right. I already have the thumb bent underneath. That's all I'm doing. I'm just going to the next note and stopping. Okay, that's it. Once I've mastered that, let's move that yellow highlight over to um, maybe right here. So I'm holding the G sharp in the left hand. I'm holding the C sharp, yeah, in the, in the right hand. I'm about to strike the third beat notes together and then go into that B with the thumb. Okay, I'm forgetting one, something really important too. Guess what the dynamic is. That's a little nicer. Okay. All right, so let's keep moving back. This time, I'm still holding the G sharp in the left hand, but I'm back to F sharp in the right, right? The note right before the G sharp. Um, so I'm holding those two down about a strike the C sharp and then into beat three and then stopping at that uh, thin indigo line. Right. That should not feel so hard. I'm just playing a couple more notes in the right hand. Okay. And at every point I'm kind of joining these little segments together to make sure that whatever I'm doing is correct. If only I could play all these individual segments one after another perfectly, then I should be able to play the piece, right? That's, that's the idea of, of this practice, is that you don't leave any stone unturned, so nothing is going to surprise you or give you that lack of confidence in your playing. So um, you can kind of see how this practice will unfold, and eventually you should have covered all these coordination moments in both hands thoroughly and ready to move on. Again, I'm obviously taking time to explain this thoroughly. In your own practice, it should take much less time if you just methodically work through these position shifts. I'm going to go on to the next measure just so we can talk about what's going on there. And, um, you know, here again I have editor's fingerings and I'm going to continue changing like this. Of course, with the fingerings, I'm going to have to add some position shifts. Let's see. So in the left hand, it's going to be right here, and then I have to flick back out like this. So big crossover, maybe a little adjustment as I play the G sharp, but I'm not going to mark it in. It's just going to have to happen. Right? There's a little extension of the C sharp or to the C sharp, keeping the thumb tucked under, right, and then flicking the left hand back out. So that's the left hand's problem. In the right hand, we start like this. Uh, so at the beginning, we have two on the G sharp, like I have it marked, back, you know, connecting with the previous measure, but I instantly have to shift the thumb over to E. So that's going to be one little position change like this. And then as I play the thumb, that long finger crossover happens, you know. And then as I play the G sharp, flick the thumb out to cover note B right here. 
So quite a lot going on in the right hand in the beginning, but luckily we're set for the rest of the measure into the next measure. Then it's all about maintaining focus on the left hand. So let's do the practice in both hands, starting from the end of this measure, just to really um, focus on coordinating these motions and working them in, into our procedural flow, performance flow, you might say. So let's choose, I actually want to try this green highlight. So at the beginning, if we can just do that, make sure we're in the right position. So this, that's the current position, right? And if you ever forget what the position is, you can also do something like that, which just shows which notes you are actively preparing. So we have obviously here, these three notes. Okay, so I've got this ready in both hands, just making sure that I know what that position is. Okay, okay so if I play C sharp and E on beat four, I'm all set. All right, now I'm going to move, and of course I have to delete this green highlight like this. Now let's move it over to here. So on that G sharp, I also have to hold the D sharp in the right hand with finger three. Oh, G sharp is finger four, thumb tucked underneath. Yeah. Okay, that's all I'm practicing. Now I'm connecting between the G sharp in the right and the left hand to the E in the left hand where I do that special flicking out of the left hand. Good. Now uh, let's step back to C sharp. Okay, holding the C sharp. Hands are kind of close together at this point, so I'm trying to negotiate this interlocking of the two hands. Right, so C sharp in the left hand, D sharp in the right, and now playing the G sharp and then the fourth beat where I'm stopping. Ooh, that's tricky. But once you do it a couple of times, just focused on nothing but that, it becomes easier. So holding these notes. Okay, always stopping, always stopping at the same place. Uh, let's keep going. So I have the G sharp down now in the left hand, still holding that same long D sharp in the right, and now going through those left hand notes. Ooh, that's a lot. Of course, you can also play it with a pedal if you want to. Maintaining that beautiful pianissimo sound if you can. I don't even know if once you play the whole thing. change pedal at all. It's just part of this Debussy and Debussy-esque uh, wash of sound around this added note C sharp minor slash E pedal point harmony. Call it what you want. The words don't matter as much as how the sound works together. So I would just keep the pedal down for the entire measure. Okay, so then we go back to what here. Um, so again, we're playing with this thumb really, really tucked underneath. We're, we're, I'm always failing to show it correctly. Here, uh, too many cameras, right? <laughs> okay, so with the thumb tucked underneath, that, right? I've already got fourth finger over the G sharp. There's that tendency to bring the thumb out, isn't there? So if you notice, the best way to play the left hand is to actually keep that interesting angle of the long fingers. They're not aligned with the keys, right? They're kind of at a 45 degree angle. Kind of sliding inside the keyboard. But that's, that assures the smoothest way to play through that accompaniment. Okay, one more time. 
more time. Green, green line. Okay, so that's what you have to master in this measure, basically. That sort of a special feeling in the shape of the right of the left hand, right? How it interlocks with the right hand, so you don't collide. And then I would say, okay, that's good. Now we will instead stop right here. Right, make sure we can do this. That's how we're stopping. We're stopping not like this, we're stopping like this. And actually like this, I apologize. In the right hand, that's the position. And this is the left hand position. Kind of weird if you think about it in isolation, but that's what has to happen. Okay, so just pause on that note. Enjoy the major seventh harmony. Okay, so you've got that down. Now we're stepping back. G sharp and finger five. Uh, C sharp in, in the left hand. Okay, my my right hand is in position already, but my left hand is not yet. Ah. So that's the move I'm working on. So I'm holding the, sheet, the C sharp there in the left hand, G sharp in the right, about to go into beat two. There it is. You'll notice that there is a bit of a problem. My second finger is not close to the C-sharp. It'll have to be there, but it's not yet. So you really, really have to kind of be aware of how it's going to move. Maybe playing the right hand a little inside the keys might be a good idea, maybe. Anyway, try it out. Everybody's fingers are slightly different. Maybe push it inside the keys giving that second finger in the left hand a little room. Right, that way, see how I can bring the second finger over right away in, in the left hand? And always, always thumb tucked underneath. What am I doing? Sorry. Forget what just happened in the last minute. C sharp in the in the left hand, G sharp in the right. One more time. There it is. So it's very easy to confuse oneself when you're practicing. You're not really fo focus, focusing on how you're starting and how you're finishing. So check that so you don't make my mistake here. Okay, now stepping one more back. Oh, yeah, I have to delete, unfortunately, that arrow, but anyway, you know what I was trying to say. So starting on the E note now. C sharp and E held together. And now the G sharp about to come in. And then the second beat notes together. two things to do, right? I I also need to flick out the thumb in the in the right hand. Okay, that was better. One more time. Holding the E in the C sharp. About the, to play the G sharp and instantly do that little square that you see. Bring the thumb over. And then as I'm stopping, I'm bringing the long fingers over in the uh, left hand. very very tricky in terms of physiology all these adjustments and then finally we get to the beginning notice you can play like this inside the keys in the left hand or you can play like this on the edges of the keys I think inside is better because then you see that happens second finger is so much closer than to C sharp than if you do this Look where my, my second is right now. So little things like that actually matter a lot for how smoothly you can play passages. Right? Much easier versus little extra adjustment needed.
doesn't seem like a big deal but when you're trying to negotiate everything else going on can be a bit of a challenge all right let's see downbeat about to do that and then this and then finally Oof, that was tough but it's not so tough because before I got to that downbeat note I'd worked through everything uh, following this note right by stepping backwards and so that really gave me a lot more confidence than if I was doing something like you know starting on the G sharp let's say downbeat okay and then okay 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 fine okay going forward So there's, you're always kind of going into the unknown that way. If you always start at the beginning and then move forward and by adding one extra note, one extra note. And, and by stepping into the unknown, you're not building that confidence that is great to build um, for practicing if you are starting at the end and then moving backwards. So anyhow, so we've, we've covered those two measures. And the nice thing is that the next two measures, so basically that part same thing really is the only difference is you need to make sure to move uh, your position up here well not as big anyway somewhere there right after the downbeat of this segment other than that everything else in those two thick indigo highlight measures same as the previous two so we're going to keep moving we're going to go here and we're going to look at what's going on here. Okay, so in the, in the left hand, it's pretty much the same pattern. You have to cross over the left hand and uh, try to... By the way, I completely forgot to say that there is an alternative fingering in uh, the left hand, which some people like, which is it eliminates the need to have that thumb tucked underneath. It has the advantage of that. It's a little easier in the hand. It might have another disadvantage, which is you have to find the note you just left uh, by bending the thumb back in. But it's certainly another possibility for how to finger the left hand passage. I'm going with this harder work approach, you might say, for the left hand. But obviously, if you decided that it's better to, let's say, to finger the left hand this way, then by all means, go for it. It's just that you have to ultimately have a different kind of position adjustment awareness and practice for that um, well in fact you know what let me go ahead and for these two measures I'm going to finger it alternatively uh, like this and um, practice with that in mind practice with that kind of left hand fingering okay so um, where are we okay with the fingering in the right hand you know it's a little bit strange that you have to squeeze the third finger over to D sharp in the end of that measure um, but then you know it allows you to extend the finger 5 to the G sharp so it all makes sense then of course there we'll have to squeeze in a little more like that all right so with that in mind let's map out the position shifts okay. so first we cross over with two and then we cross over with one and then backwards
Okay. Okay, so there are easier positions for sure than what I was doing previously. But look, now there are four, whereas before, what did we have? Like, I guess, two. So we've doubled the amount of positions, but we've simplified those position adjustments by only having to deal with uh, uh, single fingers at a time. Okay, so let's see. It's been a while. I, I want to kind of wrap up this segment quickly. So just maybe a few more measures and then I'll leave the next segment for, for another video. Now here I have to make sure to do this. Put the fifth finger on G sharp. So if, as long as I can do that, that takes care of the left hand. In the right hand, a pretty tricky squeeze right here. I would even say that. So we're trying to bring third and fourth into that kind of alignment. And then as soon as I play the third, the fifth flicks out. I would even say, yeah, that's what happens in in my the second finger at the E has to move to the C sharp, so that's very important. to this, I would strongly encourage you. In fact, I have an idea. What if we played the C sharp with finger one? No, actually, let's not. There are so many ideas for how to finger this, and it's very easy to kind of get uh, clever and you say oh let's do this way let's do this way and then you realize that what's happening later on is actually going to create problems so let's do this we'll play the C sharp with finger two and we'll just let the thumb hang out like this but then as we go to G sharp in that following measure we're going to tuck the thumb underneath. And I'm going to get rid of that E because I really like this idea for how to finger this. If you do it this way, you've essentially solved many problems looking forward and while i'm not saying that's the only way to finger this but i really like the way it feels in my head yeah so we're going to play the second finger on the c sharp and actually already i can start squeezing the thumb underneath just to have it be ready when it needs to play the e uh, at the end of that next measure. Right, so maybe even with the plane of the second finger, already squeeze it underneath, and then make sure you've got it placed on E natural as you play the G sharp. So that, that's, that's the mapping out of the motion in the right hand. basically very squeezed. So instead of spreading it out, like we'll definitely have to do in the rest of the piece, there's a lot of that kind of tight fingers collected together uh, positioning. That, that, that to me feels logical and it prepares the following uh, unfolding of this melody in the following couple of measures. All I had to do is bring the long fingers over and I'm set for the rest of this 
uh, at least for the next two measures. So, so that's where I will stop. Obviously, same thing. Now that you've mapped it out and you know what each individual hand is having to do to be able to play the notes, you need to coordinate it all together. Try the backwards thing, try other methods if you have it, but I find that stopping on position changes is the most important thing. Making sure that you're executing these non-playing moves, the ones that prepare you to be able to play the right keys, is probably the most important aspect of mastering piano, which often doesn't get taught as, uh, I guess, uh, as explicitly as it needs to be taught. So, yeah, stop, make sure to stop on, ev in my case, every rectangle, every square to make sure, yep, I did the move, I prepared the finger, I prepared a group of fingers, I moved the hand, as the case will be later on when we're jumping chords and so on. So that that's that. Um, more to come in more parts.